Hey guys, today I want to show you how to do a brake job on the rear wheels on this Opel Corsa C from 2003. In this process I'm going to be replacing the wheel cylinders. I will show you what you can do to remove the old cylinder in case it's stuck and install new brake line fittings. Also I will show you how to remove the brake shoes and install new ones. Since I mentioned the wheel cylinders it means this car has drum brakes on the back wheel. So with a 17 mm socket undo the bolts from the wheel and take it out. Right, so this drum brake might be a little bit different from what you've seen until now. So the first step is to remove this cup. You can use a screwdriver to pry it out. If it doesn't work, you can use some sort of plier or whatever you can to take it out like that. Down here, you're gonna find a 27 millimeter nut, which will hold basically the drum on the brakes. So definitely you're gonna need a breaker bar or an impact gun if you have. This can be under a lot of torque, so... Alright, let's see. There we go. From this point I can use my ratchet. Now, in order to remove the drum, make sure that the handbrake is off. You can also check this wire down here, this should be free. Sometimes it can be stuck from different reasons, so... You might try to remove it with your hands, but most of the time this will be very stuck in there, so use one of these slide hammers you can use this adapter and place it on a drum as you can see I can for example match this bolt down here for the other bolt it's impossible to find the position but anyway it can work with one bolt only so now it looks solid so I'm going to put my slide hammer on make sure that your neighbors don't sleep I'm gonna take this box out of the way. I don't want any rust in there. Let's see. Now let's remove the tool from the drum. I can show you the third purpose of this drum is to hold the wheel bearings, which are down there. So basically, if you want to replace the wheel bearings on the back wheel of this car, you gotta replace the drum brakes altogether, which is kind of cool. Here is the wheel cylinders I'm talking about. One of the pistons is blocked. This one still works. Very hard, but still works. This one is replacement. Otherwise, when you brake, all the energy will be transferred only on one pad. So, with a screwdriver and a glove for protection, I'm going to remove this spring. You can see my screwdriver and pop it out. So in order to remove easier the wheel cylinder, I will have to remove the brake shoes first. Also another purpose of removing these brake shoes, even though I'm going to reuse them, is to lubricate this point, because I'm going to show you why in a minute. And I'm going to hold onto this spring-loaded pins, basically. I will hold it like that. Now, when I twist the pin, the spring should pop off. Again, make sure that the spring doesn't fly in your eyes. So it's a good idea to wear some protective gloves. This pin I was talking about, which is basically spring loaded. So again, if you have to replace the shoes, make sure that it comes together with these springs. Otherwise you gotta reuse the old ones and it's not a good idea to put new brake shoes and old springs. Right, so you can see one of the reasons I had to remove this brake pad is to check this leg, which is responsible basically with the handbrake. As you can see, once it's connected on the handbrake line, when you pull in this direction, the brake pad will be moving towards the exterior, therefore stopping the wheel, braking the car. So it's important that on this point, this leg will move freely and equal compared to the other wheel. So on both wheels, this should be moving freely. Otherwise, what will happen if this one will be stuck on one wheel? The wheel with the most freedom on the leg will get the most braking force and in that situation you might get one wheel stuck because even though you can stop the wheels it doesn't mean that the brake pad will be able to move back in that situation you might get a blocked wheel this can be dangerous when you drive on slippery roads and if you take it to a shop they might replace all the braking system even though you don't need that and in short words, just because this thing is not lubricated and moving freely, 
you might end up paying a lot of money for your car. So with the E10 socket, you've got um, only one bolt, which is holding the wheel cylinder on. You will need an extension for this because you've got the brake line in the way. If you find a lot of rust down there, make sure that you use some wire brush to clean up the area where the bolt sits in order to not round the bolt up. Now you can come from the front and begin to hit the wheel cylinder in order to remove it. So if let's say you want to reuse this brake line with the brake line fitting, then you have to use a 7 mm wrench. So you can see in my situation, it doesn't come out. I also tried with the wheel cylinder on, with the bolt secured on the wheel, still doesn't come out. Alright, so as a last solution, you'll have to cut out the brake line with the fitting. Also make sure that you have all the equipment with you necessary to finish this brake job before cutting the wheel cylinder, because otherwise your car is basically stuck in position, you cannot reuse it. So that was a short disclaimer for you guys. Also make sure that you obstruct the brake line, the rubber part, because there is a rubber part down there. You just use some lockable pliers and catch the pipe simply. Now let's remove this old brake line fitting. Now with a screwdriver, remove the brake line from this plastic clips. So I'm going to install first the brake line fitting. Now you'll need this tool in order to make that end on the brake line. Very important to have this tool, otherwise you cannot do this job. So make sure that you catch the line. Here you can see how much the line is out. It's around, it's around two millimeters. So I'm going to place my tool like this because I'm going to tighten this direction. So it will stop like that. And you can see that nail will basically go on the brake line and make it flat. If you want, you might heat up that pipe in order to make it easier. Make sure that it's not cracked or anything like that. Now let's go ahead and connect it on the wheel cylinder. It should go inside easy and here it comes nicely. And I can go from the back and install this bolt. Now with the 10 millimeter wrench, I can tight the brake line fitting and that should secure the brake line in there. Don't forget about the bleeding nozzle, tight it in. We are not going to remove yet the lockable plier to allow the brake fluid to come into the system yet because I'm going to install first the brake shoes. I will use copper paste on these contact points, some extra copper paste on this brake line. Make sure that it doesn't touch the braking material. The copper paste will also prevent further rust to accumulate. Now the brake shoes are in position and I'm going to release the brake line. That sound comes from that little piece of metal which is rusted. It goes around the rotation area. I can show you what to do in case you have problems with your handbrake. Because I had also on this. So with the handbrake off, put some copper paste on this point. I'm gonna put some copper paste on the other side. Also back here where the brake line goes inside the drum. The fluid which comes out does not have any air anymore. After you torque down the axle nut, you can install the wheels, go for a ride, see how it breaks, check for leaks. And that was it. Thanks for watching. If you are new to this channel and you want to see more car repair videos, hit that subscribe button. And until next time, take care so I can see you soon.